Hello, I'm Lisa Malone. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. A few weeks ago, a church-wide email included two pictures of our congregation worshiping in this beautiful sanctuary. One was a 1959 black and white photo, and the other was taken just last year, a span of 64 years. Yours truly appears in both photos. I've seen a lot of changes over the years, over these decades, but one of our core values that has stood the test of time is that all are welcome and all belong. We're so glad you're here. Good morning and welcome to virtual worship. My name is Ashley. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the minister to families and youth. I am so glad that you took the time out of your morning, and I hope that you'll take a few moments to let us know that you're watching with us virtually in the comments. Now, let me direct your attention to a few fun things that are going on in the life of First Church. First, next Sunday, May the 12th, we will be having Senior Sunday. If you're graduating from high school or from college, we want to celebrate you during the service. Please send me a photo and where you're graduating from via email, ashley at firstchurchbhm.com. Again, we want to take the time to celebrate this big event with you on May the 12th. So please send me a photo and where you're graduating from. Also on May the 12th, we're going to be having a joining Sunday. And so if you're a little shy and have been waiting for a big group to join, this is your Sunday. On May the 12th, you can join with all your friends and family from First Church. And so if you're wanting to do this, please reach out to the church via the office and we'll get you signed up to join with us in membership. My next announcement is June the 10th through June the 13th, we are going to have a busy week here at First Church. Arts Camp is happening that week and we have entitled this week Hero Hotline and there are going to be hundreds of heroes buzzing around our campus. And so if you have a family or a friend who would love to come to arts camp, please get them signed up through our coming up tab. And if you want to volunteer for this week, please reach out to me. I would love to plug you in to get you um, in our hero hotline team for this week. Again, it's June the 10th to the 13th, and we would love for you to invite all your friends and family. My next and last announcement is Flaming Grant is going to be at Woodlawn Theater on May the 23rd, and the tickets for the concert are only $23. This is just going to be a fun time of fellowship with people from First Church. We hope that you can come and be a part of this and just laugh and have a good time with us again on May the 23rd for only $23. We can have a good time and be in fellowship. I hope that you have a blessed morning here with us and find the peace that you're looking for as you worship.
I invite you to hear the words of our prayer of confession and then the words of assurance. For the times we are afraid of the stranger, for the times we refuse the stranger, because we think our resources are just too meager, Lord, forgive us. For the times we stereotype the stranger as enemy, as dangerous, as inferior somehow, Lord, forgive us. For the times we are too busy trying to impress our guests, the times we think we are being hospitable, but instead we serve only our own needs, Lord, forgive us. For the times that we miss the gift of the stranger, for the times we close our door in fear, for the times we miss your face in the other, Lord, have mercy, forgive us. Friends, God knows that in our own struggles, hurts, and brokenness, we turn inward and fail to notice the needs of another. The divine understands that sometimes in our excitement to see those whom we know, we forget to make space for those who we do not yet know. The graciousness of our Creator is such that we are always lovingly reminded of the divine's wide welcome and invited to start again with hearts attuned to the inclusion of all. Have no fear, friends. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, I invite you all into a time of prayer. 
in which we will close by joining our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Let us pray. Creator God, forgive us, for we have forgotten. We have forgotten who we are and whose we are. We have forgotten what you have done for us. We have listened to the voices of this world that tell us that we are not good enough, that we don't measure up, that we're broken, that we're not living out your will, that we are just simply no good. Forgive us for we have forgotten. Yet your word in the beginning, in the gospel of Christ, in the letters to the early church, they tell us over and over again that you, you create us out of dust into beautiful things. Beautiful things out of dust. We are your created, fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, beautiful and unique. God, on this day, we claim that we are good that we are made in your image and that it is in our uniqueness and differences that we are beautiful, that we are strong, that we are whole, and that we are wonderfully made. God, that the color of our skin, our gender identity, our sexuality, that our very being is beautifully and wonderfully made in your image. Your word tells us that there is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For we are all one in Christ. So today, God, may we be liberated from the lies we hear, the lies we tell ourselves, the lies of the world. And may we be reminded what you have done for us. For you have given us good news in creation, in the mother Mary, in the babe of Jesus, in the ministry of Christ, in the following of the disciples, in the early church. It has been shared from one generation to another. And God, may we share it with this generation. Much has been done, and there is so much more to do. God, may we do good. May we be love here as First United Methodist Church in downtown Birmingham, Alabama, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to all of the world to make disciples. And just as the disciples did, this morning, we join our voices together and pray the prayer that Jesus, the rabbi, taught his pupils to pray. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please hear these words from 1 John chapter 4, verses 16 through 21. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, in God in them. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fear is not made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a sibling is a liar. For whoever does not love their sibling whom they have seen cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And God has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their sibling. Church family, as we move into our call for offertory, there's one thing that as a church we do so well. You share your gifts and your talents every week. On a weekly basis, many of you tithe and give a portion of your money to the church. And because you do that as a United Methodist congregation, a part of those tithes and offerings go to organizations like United Methodist Commission on Relief, who's doing service work after tornadoes and hurricanes. We also support the Commission on the Status and Role of Women in the Church, Ministries with the Poor, the General Board of Church and Society, and missional churches in the Central District. Your tithes and offerings are making a difference, not only in Birmingham, not only in the States, but across the world. Church, as you give, we give as a body, and all of our money combined is doing so much work. So this morning as you give, would you give with a cheerful heart?
My name is Katie Gilbert, and I serve as our executive pastor and use the pronouns she and her. I'm so glad to be offering a reflection on this significant Sunday morning. By the time that you are watching this on Sunday, May 5th or later, General Conference from 2020, now 2024, will have concluded. As I'm writing and recording, there isn't a whole lot that we know for certain yet about what will happen or not, what will change or not. But regardless, moving forward with whatever comes our way out of General Conference, it will feel like a new beginning. So this morning, I want to share some reflections that I have gleaned from John O'Donohue, a poet, philosopher, and ex-priest who is known for his wisdom in the Celtic tradition in particular. I don't know about you, but beginnings often seem frightening because they are the start of an unknown journey, moving into unknown territory. And yet, new beginnings also offer us the opportunity to remind us that our story is not yet complete. That the story we are telling about who we are and where we are going is yet unwritten. In this way, a beginning is an invitation to open up to the gifts and growth that are being stored up for us. And by refusing to act in these moments of beginning, we can actually neglect our truest identity and the possibility that is ahead of us. You see, it is true that change is a constant in life, even though we may not like it. It's dependent on a continuous act of new beginning. We see this when we look at things like the seasons and the new birth that is happening all around us in the season that we're in right now in spring. We see the buds and blooms that are pushing through the dark and cold earth. We see the trees that are bursting forth with green where before there was only hardened bark. O'Donohue suggests that perhaps the art of harvesting the riches of our lives is best achieved when we can place trust in the act of beginning again. In these situations, risk is our greatest ally. And to truly live creatively and fully, we need to discern where we might be stagnant and where new beginning is ripening. There cannot be growth where we are not open and remaining vulnerable to what is new and different. I can't help but think that regardless of the outcome of General Conference, these days and weeks ahead will feel new and different. They will offer us opportunities to lean in and to live more fully into being an open place for all. So often we find ourselves trapped in the desire to keep things the same, to stay safely within the boundaries of what we already know. However, when we leap into something new, we can discover a whole new train of possibility that gets set into motion. If we can take a deep breath and if we can prepare our hearts for a fresh beginning, for unforeseen things, can emerge. This is what beginning is. It's an opening for surprises that we might never have seen or known. It is a recognizing that there are new and exciting possibilities still at hand. So as we move forward from this day, no matter what truth it has brought to our plate, may we have the courage to see these new beginnings as exciting possibilities clinging always to the truth that love is what defines us here at First Church. In closing this morning, I want to share a blessing by John O'Donohue. This blessing is for a new beginning. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, 
feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered. It heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight, when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground. Your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plenitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure, hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses that the world awaits you. We believe God is love, and from love all things are born. No creature or creation falls outside of God's eternal embrace. We believe that forces of control and greed, prejudice and violence pervade our lives, seeking to turn us against one another, against the earth. And against the spirit of the liberating Christ, we believe in the power of God to make what seems impossible, possible. We believe in the good news that sets the captive free. We believe in proclaiming the truths that unsettle unjust power and encourage collective liberation. We proclaim these truths in aspiration that we might learn to live in them full. We recognize still other truths remain hidden. And we pray we may continue to grow in understanding, in love for all of our neighbors, in hunger for justice, and in the steadfast practice of our faith.
This morning, as we conclude our time together, I invite you to hear these words of blessing. Friends, may our new beginnings carry us forward into the surprises and possibilities of being the church centered in love and in inclusion for all. In the name of our creator, our savior, and our sustainer, amen. When night has fallen, when fear has fallen, still you're calling.